We've already talked about the general strength of acids in a previous video. So now we want to take a little look at two other types of acids. The first one is oxoacids. These are going to have a hydrogen, oxygen, and some sort of central atom. It's going to be some sort of non-metal. So they're going to have the general structure that you see below. And the acidity is going to be determined by how groups are connected to oxygen affect the polarity of the OH bond. This is not actually any different from what we were discussing before when we were talking about the analogy of electron density being like trying to share a blanket. This is the same general idea, but instead of it being a tug of war of one blanket and two opposing forces, now we actually have an entire molecule. But the idea stays the same. The more electron density that is more evenly shared between the molecule and the hydrogens, the weaker the acid, the harder it's going to be to actually get the hydrogen to come off of the molecule. Whereas if you have more electron density pulled towards the more of the molecule, less to the hydrogen, the more acidic it's going to be, which is where you get that the more polar, the more acidic. So we can talk about the same number of lone oxygens with a different central atom. It's important in this to keep in mind where the hydrogen is. So in these oxoacid examples, if you've got oxygens, that hydrogen is attached to the oxygen. That's where it is. So you might not think that that central atom matters, but it matters a great deal. So when you're looking at the difference between um, the two acids with chlorine versus bromine, that chlorine is pulling its electron density from the oxygen atom to the chlorine, which will then in turn give less electron density between the oxygen and the hydrogen. So for that reason, as the electronegativity of that central atom increases, you get a stronger atom. So acidity actually increases as you go up a group and from left to right. So the more electronegative with their oxo acids, the uh, stronger the acid. So now we could have the same central atom but a different number of oxygens. And what's going to happen is the more oxygens you get, the stronger the acid. This is working pretty much in the same way that the previous example was. Except now, instead of it just being the electronegativity of one atom, what you're actually looking at is the more lone oxygens you add, the more they will pull on the central atom, the more that central atom will pull on the other oxygen. So this is kind of a very complicated tug of war that's happening. But the more oxygens, the more lone oxygens you have, the more they're gonna pull on the central atom. The more the central atom will pull on the other oxygen, the less electron density that lone oxygen has to share with the hydrogen. The more likely it is to pop off that the hydrogen will not be have enough electron density to stay attached. So here's the last one. You can have different central atoms and different number of lone oxygens. Ah, just when you thought it was simple. So here's the thing. Keep in mind, the stronger the acid is, the weaker the conjugate base is. We may have talked about this before, but it, make, it should make a fair amount of sense that the better the acid is, the weaker, the worse its conjugate base is going to be. So the easiest way to actually assess something with different central atoms and different number of lone oxygens is to actually take a look at its conjugate base. So in this case, we want to take a look at the things that are in brackets. And if you'll notice, there for the one with sulfur, it's got three lone oxygens that are sharing one negative charge. So each lone oxygen essentially has a charge of negative one third. There's three of them sharing a negative one charge. In the other example, in our phosphoric example, with phosphorus, each lone oxygen, there's two of them sharing a negative one charge. So each one of those is gonna have a negative one half charge. Because the, the lone oxygens attached to the phosphorus have a higher charge, they are going to be able to attract that hydrogen better. So because the phosphorus can attract the hydrogen better, that's a better conjugate base, which means a weaker acid. Said the other way around, since the 
the lone oxygens in the sulfur compound attract the hydrogen less, that's a weaker base and therefore its acid is a stronger acid. This one may take you a little bit of practice to see, so think about this one. And the last examples are carboxylic acids. So this is that COOH group that I threatened you guys would see a lot. And here's the deal. You wind up producing what we call a carboxylic anion from this when you remove the hydrogen. So the more stable the anion is, the more acidic the acid is. So the more, the happier the compound is with that negative charge, the more likely it is to be in a state with a negative charge. And you can increase stability by increasing the number of electronegative groups. So again, this is similar to what we saw previously with the more lone oxygens you have, the more electronegative things are. The more electronegative groups you have in the R group, the more likely the whole thing is to be negative, the better an acid.